I loaded up with our die press. It's about a 17,000 pound press. Um, I do have uh, edge protectors or a blanket over there, but we'll see how long that lasts. I feel like that might be a problem. But um, I actually need to get some air for these front tires. I checked them when they first put them on, and I just forgot to do it. They only have 100 pounds of air in it. Running the weight that I do, they need to have 120. So I'm going to throw some air in it real quick. I can show you how I do that. this way it's one of the things I did when I bought this truck was I installed a pickle hitch with air I think you guys have only seen me use the air once and that was hauling that stack of flatbed trailers out of Florida to Pennsylvania they were air brake but other than that I don't think you guys have ever seen me use it so you got a standard trailer air connector. I'm gonna slap this down in here. It never gets used, so it's a little virgin. There we go. Open the valve. supplying air back there to that valve which would technically be for a trailer or at least the trailer brakes but instead it's going here fill up with air the governor will kick off at 125 and you can't get the uh the truck to keep building air so basically it'll fill to ambient and since the compressor doesn't kick on to about 105 psi that means you can drain the air down filling the tire up to about 110 or 105 and then it, it stalls out there because there's no more pressure to add into the tire and because the truck's air compressor isn't running, it can't fill it. And then lastly, we could still pull this back out gear back out of that system. So that's that. I probably look like a mess now. But it's part of working. Don't become a truck driver. You get fat. I've definitely gotten fat. In consequence of getting fat, you get sweaty easily. I hate that. So yeah, we just got loaded up. We're gonna take this over to Centralia, Illinois. It's not too far outside of Salt Lake, or Salt Lake, um, St. Louis. Those are fogging up. Not too far outside of St. Louis. Um, hopefully we'll find ourselves something decent to do for tomorrow, which we'll drop off in the morning. But yeah, 
got about a seven hour drive to get over there. So we'll take up pretty much the whole day to do that. Enter in my paperwork here. Um, on Facebook, some of you guys have found me on Facebook. Um, but I've noticed there's a lot of people that don't know this. You are required to put in a VOL number or at least a commodity slash shipper name into your EOD for every load you do. So for example, we'll come over here to my fancy smancy EOD. I use Keep Trucking or I think it's called Motive now. So we'll go into today, into forms, shipping documents. This was the VOL for my last load. I'm gonna get rid of that. And then we're gonna find the VOL on our current load which is 5458. Put that in there. Same. That way, if I ever get inspected, that shows up on my logs. It's just so that DOT, FMCSA, all them good people that we love so much, they can keep track of what's going where or in terms of the loads that we haul, where it's going. So, Basically, if they look at your logs, they have a reference to how far that load went for that day or two or whatever it is. So, that's a thing that a lot of, a lot of people didn't know, or at least from the hotshot community. Uh, they did not know that they need to put that in there. So, now you do. So, anyways, that's it. We were here for a little over an hour, but I took my time, so big deal let's uh let's get rolling i'll talk to you guys later today i think so i'll see you then i'm about 30 minutes into this trip and i hit a really big ass gator in the road um a retread tire i had nowhere to go it was laying in the middle of the road and i heard it hit uh, my axle underneath and I never saw it come out from underneath the truck. So uh, I'm going to check to see if there's any damage and if it's still there. Well, I obviously don't see it, so that's good. But uh, I heard it hit. And I never saw it come out. Well, it's gone. As far as I can tell, other than a broken bungee, nothing is damaged. I don't even see where it could have hit. Make sure it wasn't the front end. No, we're good. Weird. Well, I guess we continue on. They're usually cast dies on the small truck. Now, this is for, so this is for the F-150 Lightning. The, the front strap, or the front, the front trunk. This makes the strap that supports that front trunk, uh, front trunk. Oh, really? <laughs> the reason we set it down there, they had a change, and they added three punches for us, three holes to get punched into this, and they're going through a different process instead of a, uh, bonded or glued component, and this will be assembled in the Yeah, that's our old trip. figured out where I was going uh, everyone just sort of sprang into action and I never got a chance to pull the camera out 
but uh, anyways, we just obviously dropped off. We're heading through Centralia, or Centralia, Illinois now. Going right through the middle of it. <clears throat> it's kind of cool to see. We're on a little one-way street. This is uh, US 51 that we're on. And uh, we're going to head up towards Effingham, park up at the Petro over there. Uh, believe it or not, I've never actually stayed in Effingham before. I don't get out to this part of Illinois that much. I uh, never really had a need to. But uh, I know Effingham, between Petro, TA, the several different chrome shops out there, that's the place to stop. So that'll put me about an hour away from where I need to be. We're going to Champaign, Illinois to pick up our papers. So, again, that'll be about an hour away. I gotta be there at 8, so I'll probably get up at you know, 6 in the morning, take my sweet time, get on up there by about 7.30, and uh, get loaded head to Cincinnati. Still don't know what I'm doing after that yet, but uh, I'll figure that out as time comes. Tonight it's late, 6:30, and um, 
try to get it up for you guys tomorrow. So that's my plan, and I will talk to you later.